organic molecules form the basis for cellular life. So to introduce you to organic molecules, in this video we will compare organic and inorganic molecules, and then we'll discuss some characteristics of carbon-based compounds. After watching this video, you should be able to differentiate between organic and inorganic molecules, as well as to understand the diversity of carbon-based molecules. So here we see some organic and some inorganic compounds. So first, let's look at the organic compounds. We see sugar, olive oil, and gasoline. All of these are organic compounds, in addition to many other carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. On the right, we see several examples of inorganic compounds, such as table salt or sodium chloride, metals such as nickel, and glass, which is a silica-based structure. So what makes an organic molecule an organic molecule? The short answer is the element carbon. All organic molecules are carbon-based structures and contain a backbone of carbon atoms. These are described as organic molecules because they were once thought to only occur in living things. In contrast, inorganic molecules are not carbon-based. So why is carbon so important? To understand that, we first need to take a look at its structure. So here we see a carbon atom in the center that is bonded to four other atoms. So carbon can form exactly four covalent bonds. And these four bonds, if they are all single bonds, form a tetrahedral structure, which you can think of as a triangular pyramid. However, carbon is not limited to forming single bonds. Carbon can form single bonds, as shown here. However, it can also form double bonds, so where we have two shared, paired, uh, shared pairs of electrons between carbons, or triple bonds, where we have three shared pairs of electrons between carbons. These structures allow carbon-based molecules to take on a variety of shapes. So here first we see methane. Methane is carbon attached to four, covalently bonded to four hydrogens, and we can see here that it forms a tetrahedral shaped molecule. However, if we look at ethane, which has two carbons that are bonded to one another via a single covalent bond and surrounded by covalently bonded hydrogens, here those two pyramids come together and we have a completely different structure. In contrast, ethene, which has two carbons that share a double bond, so these there are two covalent bonds, so two pairs of electrons are shared, it, in contrast to ethane, has a planar structure. So these variety of shapes allow carbon molecules to accomplish all kinds of cellular functions. And in addition, if we add more and more carbons to these chains, we can get a variety of carbon skeletons that, skeletons that vary in several different ways. For example, we can have carbon skeletons of different lengths, so chains of carbons that are longer or shorter. These skeletons can branch, so we can have chains of carbons that are a single linear chain, or we can also have branch chains. They can also vary by having double or single bonds, and the position of these double bonds or even triple bonds can vary within a chain. And finally, carbon can also form ringed structures. So these structures create a, a great amount of diversity that allow carbon-based organic molecules to serve many different cellular functions.